Okay, we're back live inside the Cube in Orlando, Florida. This is SAP Sapphire's exclusive coverage from SiliconAngle.tv. I'm the founder of SiliconAngle.com. TV. We just had Reggie Jackson on the Cube, famous baseball star, and uh, I'm here with my co-host Dave Vellante. And we've talked about Moneyball in the past, Dave. <laughs> uh, it's good to get a little baseball theme back, but. Uh, uh, our next guest, uh, we talked about Moneyball with his CEO. Yeah, so uh, Thomas Stanley, you you were a former baseball player, right? Yeah, yeah, former baseball player. Pro never, yeah, never, yeah. never as good as Reggie, but uh, that's I'm pretty impressive. Pretend. He's, you know, he's, 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 he, I mean, he obviously is a great athlete, and he said, you know, flat out, I could have been actually a pretty accomplished professional football player. I don't, I don't have any doubt yeah. in my mind, you know, having watched that guy play, this body type. You know, he, he still was, looks great. He was a running back. Yeah, he's he was phenomenal baseball yeah, player. Yeah. And uh, no. our Yankees, say. your socks, not too. Oh, bad. you were a Yankees fan? Uh, yes, I. Oh, am. you didn't mention that to me. Well, it wasn't appropriate. At Did the you time. grow up in New York? Or? No, I uh, actually had the unfortunate having divorced parents. So I grew up in North Carolina, and I spent and my they, summers in New York. My and dad they didn't have a baseball team down there. <laughs> <laughs> well, they had a lot of college teams. That's right, a lot of college teams. Yeah, so I grew, I grew up, uh, came up with the Jeter days. So uh, oh, okay. I saw him coming out. Yeah, yeah, hit a couple balls against them. But uh, he got the job. What did you play? What position? I played center field. All right. Yeah. So you got wheels. I got a little. And wheel. you could hit. I could hit. I <laughs> had wheels. That's right. I could cover. But I love baseball. John's John's kid's a great baseball player. He's a he's a baseball guy too. But anyway, we're here to talk to to Thomas about uh, tech. He's with uh, with NetApp. Um, you know, basically runs the global alliance uh, programs and mm -hmm. focus a lot on on SAP. We're here at Sapphire. Thank you for the, the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, it's great to great to meet you. So you said you were here last year too. Yeah. Um, this is a nice, good show, isn't yeah, it? It's, it is uh, It's Excellent. all about business. Um, you're really seeing the message of all. Uh, a lot about cloud, a lot about mobility. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, what's your, what's your take on the whole vibe here? Well, well, I think when I compare this year to last year, last year was all about, I think, what was to come. I think this year yeah. you actually see customers that can talk about what they've done, right? And I think if you're SAP, if you're a part of the ecosystem with SAP like NetApp is, you're excited about the opportunity to be connected with what customers are actually doing now in the area of mobility, in the area of HANA. So it's exciting for us. You know, you think about, historically anyway, you talk about to customers about SAP, obviously tremendously functional. Absolutely. But complex, big, you know, we want to do, we want to roll, roll it out to 100 companies, so we've budgeted, you know, a few hundred million. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but now the messaging is changing. Mm -hmm. It's all about speed, simplicity, personalization, Absolutely. mobility. Absolutely. Um, different, different messaging. Oh, di different messaging, different vibe. I mean, I think now it's all about how do you get the right information to the right people as secure as possible at the time that they need it. Right, in a mobile workforce that we all we all live in, right, and allow people that need to make decisions to make the right decisions at that time, right, or at least have the data such that they can make a good decision. So you know, marketing always leads reality. So how, help us squint through that. I mean, yeah. where where are we in the adoption of all this this cool tech? I mean, I feel like customers are starved for it, but uh, at the tip of the iceberg. What what inning is it? You know, these baseball analogies. It's sort of first yeah. inning. Are we uh, middle of the game? And where are we? Oh no, we we've, we've definitely done the. Uh, done this, you know, six, seven inning stretch, right? Yeah, okay. So we, we've done the stretch. We've we put the products out in the marketplace. Right now, I think it's all about how does the ecosystem come together? When you look at companies like SAP or NetApp, we don't survive on our own, right? It's about what the other eco partners bring to that relationship to help customers solve problems. In terms of the technology, it's like anything else. The technology has always been there, right? But we got to see what the workloads are and the customer requirements and be able to fulfill them. And our budgets aren't unlimited, right? So I think the person who wins are the companies who can get there first with an economical offering that's efficient and drives value for the clients, right? And I think some of that's happening, and that's the buzz I think we're seeing on the floor. Yeah, so you're known for making products that are, that are simple. I mean, you yeah. guys have a great heritage, you know, Silicon Valley icon. Um, so what's Thank your? Thank you for that, by the way. Oh, it's true, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we've had Dave Hits on the Cube. We've had mm -hmm. Tom Georgians. I mean, you know, fantastic um, um, uh, company with a great Silicon Valley uh, uh, heritage. Um, what's your whole go-to-market in in SAP? Now, I go to market with SAP is is around a couple of things. Uh, f first, it starts with with innovation, right? Our our belief is that. We are in the solutions business from an innovation perspective. We're going to be the best in data management and storage from an innovation perspective. Um, it's about the customer and what the customer requirements are. And with SAP, we get to meet that demand. So in the case of SAP, we look at them from a 360 perspective, right? The whole relationship, how they use our technology in the enterprise to bring differentiation out in their organization, how we use their technology from a go-to-market perspective. So in our software, we create hooks around SAP. 
So we believe because we do integration, not only in front of the client, but behind the scenes, as SAP rolls out technology and rolls out innovation like HANA and mobility, we can be best in class, right? So that is one of the most strategic relationships for NetApp. So I want to talk about FlexPod. I, I told you off the camera I want to talk about it, and it's, it's done very well. Mm -hmm. um, it goes back to the whole converged infrastructure thing. I mean, um, there's debate about yeah. how it all started, but I've always said, well, you know, VCE kind of started it off, and then NetApp was right mm -hmm. there, fast follower, but you had a different strategy. Yeah. Um, now you saw EMC announce, and IBM announced their, EMC announced vSpecs, IBM announced mm -hmm. its uh, pure systems. Yeah with very FlexPod-like uh, value proposition, mm -hmm. openness, choice, mm -hmm. et cetera, um, which kind of affirmed what you guys are doing. Um, and I know you do sell single SKU as well through yeah, AvNet yeah, and others. So yeah. it's, a, it's this interesting tit for tat, but it's a, I call it a big land grab going on yeah. out there. So, mm -hmm. so um, give us an update on FlexPod, you know, how that's going and you know, what the whole strategy is there with regard to SAP. Well, again, I think it comes back to the client and innovation, right? And if you look at what clients want, they want best of breed in the entire stack. So the work that was done by NetApp specific to FlexPod was looking at what are the best of breed offerings in, in Cisco, UCS, and the work we've done with VMware and our storage. And customers view that as a strong value proposition. We have had phenomenal growth in the FlexPod architecture. We are, we, I won't say we're surprised, but we're certainly delighted by the growth we're seeing. Uh, we're, we're amazed by the momentum, but it speaks to the fact that customers want a best of breed stack. I think if you look at both us and our competitors, what we would both agree on is that customers don't just want a stack from one company, which is what they manufacture or what they assemble. They want things that have great innovation and great R&D that have gone into it, and that's what you get with FlexPod. And it's winning in the market, and we believe it will continue to win. Yeah, we quantified the market and we came to the conclusion, two things very quickly, three things. One, this market's huge. Absolutely. I mean, it's the, the TAM is uh, it's many hundreds of billions. Mm -hmm. we, we pegged it at 400 billion by 2017. And I think that's legitimate because it comprises all servers, all storage, mm -hmm. all networking. Um, then the, the second piece of that is that most of the market in the next five years is going to be some kind of converge, whether Absolutely. it's a single it's SKU or yeah. some kind of reference architecture plus or whatever mm -hmm. it is more than well over half is going to be converged. And then, and then the third piece that we, that we found is the choice, you know, the, the open architectures, if you will, are the ones that are going to be largest. Um, and so that sort of plays well. Absolutely. For it you does. guys. It does. A and, and I presume you're seeing that in the marketplace. Well, right? We are. And the other thing we're seeing is because of our whole strategy of, you know, allowing the customer to consume that app technology the way they want to consume it. And what, by that, what I mean is whether you're buying through an outsource or a service provider or a reseller or a distributor, or you're buying direct from NetApp, we don't care. We're interested in adding value in the way customers want to consume technology. And the number one thing they want is to increase my time in the market, to reduce my costs, not, you know, carry any risk of assuming that and be able to deploy simply and easily. Right, and we're providing that with this infrastructure we call FlexPod, and we think it's a phenomenal opportunity for us and a great opportunity for ridership for you all. Do yeah, do, <laughs> do, <laughs> we love it? Do do people um, do, do, do they are they willing to pay a premium for that integration? I mean, you guys are doing a lot of testing, a lot of integration, a lot of work up front to make customers' lives easier. Should they be should they be paying a premium for that? Um, actually, no. We haven't found that customers feel they have to pay a premium. Right. You know, really? one, of the, one of the things we've done is we've looked at, you know, pricing, the, mar pri the, the market will determine the price, right? And the price is determined by the value that you bring. And the value we're bringing is suggesting that there's no premium attached to that, that architecture of FlexPod. What's attached to it is value and a good return on the customer's investment. So why, why wouldn't somebody go for that type of converged solution? N not well informed. Um, bias towards our other particular architecture or being recommended an architecture that's different from FlexPod at this time. Or our reach, which we're working on every day. Get broader and broader in terms of our leverage to our partnerships in the market. So either, either of those reasons. Well, and you guys have made a big brand push in the last three or four years. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's presumably paid off. You've seen, certainly seen it in the top line. Mm -hmm. And um, well, how about the lock-in uh, issue? I mean, you hear that a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe probably less so with FlexPod, right? Because mm -hmm. you can pretty much use any server. Absolutely. And, you know, the only thing you can't do with the the more open solutions, there's a spectrum, right? There's, yeah. there's any color you want as long as it's black, <laughs> and then there's, you know, really sort of loose, loose reference yeah. architectures, yeah. right? Um, and then you guys are very much on that open yes. side of the spectrum. I think 
you know, really, you can't use anybody's storage. Mm -hmm. That's where it's sort of, you, yeah, you guys yeah. all draw the line. Yeah, we, we, you know? we, we, Maybe you could pop a V-series in. <laughs> and, you know, and, and, and we've do done that, that before. Yeah. But, but really what we've looked at is, you know, how do we create an environment where, you know, we're best to read around the storage and we can connect. I mean, if you think about it, we've connected to other people's networks and servers for many years. This is about us working with the best three partners in the Cisco and VM where to create a differentiated architecture. It does not mean that we can't connect to other architectures in the market, and we'll continue to do that. Yeah, and one of the things uh, NetApp's always done well, I noticed when I first started following NetApp, or re-following NetApp after I left and came back into the business, you've always had a good, you know, tight application affinity, whether it's Microsoft or mm -hmm. SAP, mm -hmm. you've always sort of put a big emphasis, we were talking about, we had Patrick Rogers on last yeah, year. Yeah, that's right. That was sort of his whole thing, you know, early on in his career, earlier in his career at, at NetApp. And so, um, so what do you see as the imperative, let's close on this, for SAP environments, um, particularly from the standpoint of where your investments are going to go? For, for us, the, the, the key imperative is to continue to not only be great at storage and data management, but to understand the workloads in the business applications. And SAP is a big driver of significant workloads, and as long as we can continue the integration with them, we believe we can bring significant value to the marketplace. So for us, it's not just what our people do with the NetApp software, because we're in the software businesses. What do we do with our software connected to the applications that SAP is bringing to market? And our job is to be number one at that, and we're going to continue to do that. We think SAP is a phenomenal relationship for our company and for the market. I think the market is excited about seeing the two companies work well together. Good. All right, Thomas Stanley, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Huh. Thanks, thanks for thank following you. Reggie. You know. yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. The worst president to yeah, me. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> thank okay, you for so, your time. Right. So stay with us, folks, watching. This is theCUBE, our flagship telecast. We go out to the top tech events and talk to the thought leaders, executives, people in the trenches making things happen. We go to the, where the stories are at the events, and we bring that to you. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. So stay right tuned. We'll be right back with our next guest, uh, and we'll talk more tech, and we're going to have the founder of SAP, who invented all this, and on, on next, talk about developers and the future right. of uh, software and cloud mobile social. So we'll be right back. Thank you.